सो हेलो गाइज वेलकम टू माई चैनल विच इज़ अंकित सुनियाल विट्स एंड आई एम वेरी वेरी ग्रेटफुल फॉर यू गाइज टू कीप ऑन सपोर्टिंग फॉर दियर सपोर्ट एंड टुडे आई एल शेयर माई नॉलेज विद यू रिगार्डिंग एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ एबडम केस और जी आई केस इन जनरल मेडिसिन आई एम रियली सॉरी दैट आई डिलेट दिस वीडियो बाई वन एंड हाफ मंथ्स बट इट टुक मी लॉट ऑफ टाइम एंड आई वॉज ऑल्सो गॉट बिजी विथ माई पर्सनल कमिटमेंट बट I know this video will be worth it and you guys will love it so let's start before starting uh, i would like to thank my seniors my colleague who shared their important uh, knowledge information and their notes and also my teachers who taught me so well and shared everything uh, whatever they could and especially uh, our patients you know uh, with whom i learned so let's start so the first thing is general examination in general examination one of the first important rule is stand on the right side of the patient for examination then you have to start uh, saying your general examination like patient is conscious oriented and cooperative conscious oriented and this uh, i'll tell you all this general examination um, part in a separate video as a how to do a detailed general examination and also this conscious oriented uh, part in the cns examination video so uh, there could be patient could have deranged consciousness or patient could uh, have drowsiness or stupor which could be part of hepatic encephalopathy so the, whatever general examination i'm going to tell you that, that is related to abdomen or how this uh, what all things you have to see uh, in case of general examination of abdomen case uh, then you have to mention about belt uh, about nourishment patient could be cachexic in case of uh, carcinoma or patient could be Uh, severely underweight in case of uh, tuberculosis then you have to talk about uh, pallor pallor could be there in tb or gi bleed for pallor pallor could be seen at lower palpable uh, conjunctiva mucous membrane skin fingernail and palm of the hand loss of palm or crease indicates severe anemia then you have to talk about clubbing could be there in crohn disease uh, carcinoma of gall bladder uh, it could be there in case of chronic love, liver disease it could be there in hepatoma then you have to talk about cyanosis present absent talk about edema edema in the next slide we'll be talking uh, uh, looking after the detailed causes of pedal edema it uh, then there could be generalized edema also which could be there in nephrotic hypothyroidism proteinuria and malnutrition then you have to talk about ictus present or not ictus have to be seen in the adequate natural daylight this you have to remember um so uh, one interesting thing like which my uh, professor used to say my medicine professor that so if the patient look very thin hai na and the abdomen is distended so it looks like as it is so it's like poverty above and prosperity below then you have to think of something like alcoholic cirrhosis whenever there is ascites plus jaundice plus pedal edema then you have to think of chronic liver disease this is these are just suggestions like uh, if you pick this 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 thing this could be the combination this could be the possible uh, cause of uh, the illness then if there is ascites plus jaundice plus clubbing is there then related to gi you can think of primary biliary cirrhosis and these uh, is this is specially seen in female patients so now uh, causes of pedal edema if there is bilateral pedal edema you have to think of congestive cardiac failure nephrotic syndrome and physiological which could be there in pregnancy anemia hyperproteinemia pre uh, eclampsia in pregnancy hepatic disease unilateral pedal, pedal edema which could be tender or non tender non tender will have phalluses phalluses also will have non pitting type of edema uh, then you will have this lymphangitis cellulitis dvt edema you have to look at the bony prominences generally uh, edema is said to be slow if it is taking more than 40 seconds to fill if it is taking less than 40 seconds is kind of fast slow filling pitting edema is seen in slow filling of pitting uh, pitting edema is seen in congestive cardiac failure fast filling of pitting edema is seen as nephrotic syndrome and other causes of non pitting pedal edema is is lymphedema lipedema and myxedema then uh, 
I just created a separate uh, scenario of I what all things important things to see in I examination in ophthalmology this used to come as a very long question or sometimes as a short question but all diseases uh, like systemic like what all respiratory illnesses you can diagnose through I what all abdomen illnesses you can diagnose through I so the first thing is definitely jaundice which we see in the natural light so it shows uh, bilirubin deposition wherever there is a collagen like your mucosa sclera is rich in elastic which also has high affinity for bilirubin so generally bilirubin uh, you can see uh, deposition in the sclera through bulbar conjunctiva mucous membrane skin palm soft palate uh generally with jaundice like what we call as ictus uh it it is seen if there is bilirubin more than 2 gram and we can subjectively classify it as as per the cause generally it is seen if it is a lemon yellow color then you can see it in case of hemolytic anemia if it is of greenish color then you can think of obstructive jaundice subjectively uh, ictus or jaundice can be also classified as mild moderate and severe that you can see uh, there is then there is carotenemia which is excess uh, carotene deposition uh, yeah, there is yellowish discoloration of skin and mucosa but there is no discoloration of sclera in carotenemia then there is xanthelasma which is yellow plaque color uh, seen more in the upper eyelid compared to the lower and seen in due to the elevated plasma lipids then there is arcus senilis arcus senilis will be gray white color just internal to the limbus uh they complete the ring and they do not disappear with treatment generally seen with naked eyes and it is a marker of atherosclerosis and hyperlipidemia in the upcoming slides i'll tell you what are uh, what are the other markers of atherosclerosis then there is a kf ring kesar fischer ring in which is yellow green in color which is due to the copper deposition on desmond's membrane this itself is another question the, which they commonly ask and present on limbus and they form incomplete ring and they form they form arcus analysis form complete ring and they disappear with treatment and confirmed by slit lamp this is a very important question most of the time examiners will ask you what is the difference between arcus analysis and case of fissure ring generally uh, arcus analysis you will see in the middle or old age people case of fissure ring generally uh, initially will start on the superior part then inferior part it is due to wilson's primary biliary cirrhosis uh, cryptogenic cirrhosis intraocular copper uh, if there is an intraocular copper body which is uniocular ring you can see then these are just the causes of jaundice like if it is hepatocellular related hemolytic jaundice or obstructive jaundice other causes could be like your like anti malarial drug there could be leukemia where there is infiltration of hepatic cells there could be hemolytic anemia there could be portal lymph node obstruction so in this slide i am discussing the lymphadenopathy specifically lymphadenopathy will be there in tb lymphoma leukemia persistent generalized lymphadenopathy pgl which is part of eight syndrome the persistent in pgl is it is more than 3 months persistent this virtuous lymph node i have discussed detail in surgery abdomen case video you can check that out then there is mar uh, scratch marks which could be due to the bile deposit in the skin there is there any involuntary movement this could be related to cns or like in your wilson's disease then refer atulka system examination generally you can put it as a separate heading or it can be just part of the same thing uh, this includes uh, your spleen includes your lymph node and bone marrow so uh, we'll be discussing mainly on the lymph nodes like in oral cavity you have to examine welder's ring which i'll tell you uh, which i also i'll cover in the um, oral cavity examination in the upcoming slides then is your lymph node you have to look at cervical axillary inguinal other than this there are other lymph nodes also which you have to also see like there is occipital lymph nodes which uh, can be in enlarged in case of uh, mumps rubella or any scalp infection lymph node enlarged along the blood vessels would be there in leukemia if there is a fatigability plus lymph node of axilla is enlarged you can think of some lymphoma there could be something called pseudo lymphadenopathy what is pseudo lymphadenopathy is like patient complains of lymph node but on examination there is no lymph node this could be seen in chronic fatigue syndrome and there could be also pseudo lymphoma pseudo lymphoma is what pseudo lymphoma 
which could be there due to the drugs uh, like phenytoin cyclosporin then uh, coming up to this is tenderness of the body of sternum so like uh, what you have to do is sternal tenderness is assessed by gentle tap over the sternum it is due to the bone marrow expansion or infiltration of the flat bone seen in case of leukemia which is there due to extramedullary hematopoiesis which could be there in lymphoma multiple lymo uh, myeloma chronic osteomyelitis tenderness over the manubrium is common you have to assess the tenderness over the sternum body how do you assess epitrochlear lymph node epitrochlear lymph node is palpated in uh, politicians handshake style like from behind the patients with the pulp of your thumb and this epitrochlear lymph nodes are enlarged in case of non hodgkin lymphoma secondary syphilis uh, secondary syphilis hiv and cll Uh, if there is a unilateral uh, epitrochlear lymph node it does not have any much role so in this slide i'm discussing uh, like you can see what all is the difference between hodgkin and non hodgkin lymphoma if you are thinking generally when they what they ask is b symptoms are present in hodgkins which is fever night sweat significant weight loss and uh, in uh, hodgkins you will also get pale abstain type of fever relapsing fever on consumption of alcohol there is increased pain and lymphadenopathy and it is seen in bimodal peak appearance means among these two commonly age groups in non hodgkins you will find mostly in the around old age patients they will have common uh, involvement in liver spleen lymph epitrochlear lymph node valdez rings bone marrow involvement is early in non hodgkins so again so in between i'm going telling you the theory also then coming to the general examination so i think this will form better basics and understanding so uh, general examination based on uh, bmi you will comment on nourishment bmi is also important if the patient is obese and he needs any dietary intervention and other things there you can take or obesity will itself is a risk factor for so many diseases then you have to look at the talosis of the palm signs of liver failure which i'll be discussing the next slide and signs of tb i'll be discussing uh, in case of uh, your pulmonary examination uh, why this tb is important is generally patients who have abdomen tb that is mostly secondary to the pulmonary tb what happens patients who have pulmonary tb like especially female they have uh, better hygiene compared to the males and they do not like to spit out so uh, patients who swallow it that sputum having the tb bacilli is swallowed into the inter intestine or stomach then it causes your abdomen tb this is how is the main cause and most common site for uh, abdomen tb is ileocecal junction patient might have constipation on examination abdomen will be dirty feeling there will be no superficial vein or caput medusa in case of superficial examination so here is the signs of liver failure the signs of liver failure is mainly due to the hyperestrogenism there is gynecomastia loss of secondary sexual character like loss of pubic hair and axillary hair the spider nevi um, near the necklace area there could be testicular atrophy due to the estrogen frontal balding or alopecia spider nevi will discuss in detail what happens is hyperestrogenemia is there due to the impaired metabolism of estrogen there is decreased clearance of androsteroid so spider nevi are central arteriole with radiating vessels seen in superior vena cava region only not in the abdomen region this is due to the dilatation of arterioles more than 5 is considered as pathological and less than 2 is generally normal it could be seen in pregnancy it could be seen in 2% of healthy healthy individuals it is pathological in case uh, of your rheumatoid arthritis thyroid toxicosis in the exam they will even ask you what is the differential diagnosis of spider nevi so that could be there due to their campbell d morgan spot which is cherry hemangioma it could be a venous star which is around 2 to 3 cm in, uh, in diameter or telangiectasia then how to confirm that it is a spider nevi what we do it we have to blanch it with the head of a pin 
okay the taper pin is there on the head side you have to just blanch it spider and ay are blanchable if there is no blanching then it can be purpura or if there is a partial blanching it could be present in case of telangiectasia parma arrhythmia due to the increased peripheral blood flow first on the hypothena uh, eminence there could be malnutrition buccal which has loss of buccal fat parotid enlargement there what could be the differential diagnosis of parotid enlargement could be mumps could be there in jogren's in jogren's syndrome or could be there in lymphoma causes of unilateral parotid swelling could be there due to any stone any localized infection or tumor and there could be duperitine uh, contracture palmar fibrosis due to the free radical injury so sometimes they will even ask what are the confirmatory signs of liver uh, cell failure so when they ask you about the liver cell uh, confirmatory sign you have to talk about the three important signs one is duperitine contracture parotid swelling and there could be parma arrhythmia so these three can be said as you know confirmatory signs of liver cell failure then there could be this paper money skin american dollar sign pedal edema reversal of normal sleep cycle sunken eyes xanthelasma uh, if it involves the brain there could be flapping tremor you know ammonia smell due to the mercaptan production there could be also loss of appetite what happens is that uh, there is a sinusoidal resistance increase which leads to portal hypertension which affects your mesenteric veins which are engorged which sends the satiety sample and causes the loss of appetite and how this cns is affected in case of uh, liver cell failure is that uh, ammonia affects glutathione metabolism which affects the gaba system and encephalopathy patient uh, with liver cell failure or having cirrhosis might have a cirrhotic facies what is cirrhotic facies cirrhotic facies patient will have sunken cheeks eyes with mala uh, prominence there would be bilateral enlarged parotids if it is due to secondary due to the alcoholism this fetal hepaticus is a characteristic breath of patient with severe parenchymal disease which has been said to resemble like order of mixture of rotten eggs or garlic so this is how they classify fetal hepaticus so coming to the second slide uh, which are signs of alcoholism which can be present in case there like, there is a parotid swelling duperitine contracture spider nevi white mites uh, there could be palma edema or puff face markers of anemia they will have signs of vitamin b12 deficiency uh, iron deficiency which will have cholinokia angular stomatitis atrophic glossitis they could be history of pica pica which is eating mud or soil brittle hair or palm or any ent also they will even tell you palma winston syndrome in vitamin b12 deficiency is also important uh, in case if there is a vitamin b12 deficiency they have smooth tongue beefy tongue graying of hair paresthesia which affects the cns tingling and numbness then there could be signs of hemolysis gall stones could be their deposition formation due to the bilirubin deposition which will patient will come with abdomen pain there could be bronze color skin due to the hemosiderosis there could be diabetes due to the jaundice could be the uh, increase in indirect bilirubin leg ulcers there in sickle cell anemia in sickle cell anemia they will also have jaundice the plus any painful or hand swelling they could be splenomegaly mostly they might have leg ulcers or bone necrosis splenomegaly and hereditary spherocytosis there could be other lab markers then markers of extramedullary hematopoiesis this you have to find out by of your by your own then when you palpate the vessels uh, for pulse on all the four limbs then you can appreciate this whether the artery is thickened or not arcus analysis dental asthma calcified valve in chest x ray then coming to the next part which is vitals like you have to check at the pulse bp respiration respiratory temperature if you have a thermometer if not then a febrile or febrile what happens is if the patient is having jaundice there could be bile salt deposition which uh, which causes sinus node dysfunction or sa node which causes bradycardia so in case of obstructive jaundice heart rate might be less because of bile deposition and if uh, like uh, temperature is important because uh, fever can occur in case of alcoholic hepatitis due to the inflammation and this to we generally know if there is a 1 degree 
increase one degree Celsius increase in the temperature then there would be 10 beats per minute increase in the heart rate or pulse rate okay then there could be um, BP in BP of cirrhosis there could be decreased there could be decreased diastolic BP due to the uh, vasodilation mediators like nitric oxide is released and uh, SBBP systolic blood pressure might be normal so the pulse pressure might increase pulse pressure might increase in case of cirrhosis so this is your elementary canal examination first we will start with the oral cavity uh, remember elementary canal is from mouth to anus so my, this is my professor used to say so you have to examine mouth till anus completely starting with the oral cavity uh, you have to look for teeth for any caries gum bleeding petechia uh, on palate valdus ring so valdus ring inner and outer so the inner ring will uh, consist of pharyngeal tonsils tubal tonsils palatine tonsils and lingual tonsils uh, valdus ring is a lymphatic ring and enlarges in case of as I already told non hodgkins lymphoma is there any oral ulcer which can be sign of vitamin deficiency or angular stomatitis could be there in iron deficiency look examine the oropharynx uh, look at the tongue tongue is what is the size of face color because tongue as a marker itself can be a good important question but also a very important thing as a physicians to learn so I think you can take a screenshot of this and know is macroglossia when the when it becomes beefy in case of vitamin B12 deficiency, pellagra, Down syndrome, macromegaly. When it becomes microglossia, pseudobulbar palsy, facial hemiatrophy, dehydration, starvation, bluish the sign of central cyanosis. When it becomes black, when there is a black hairy tongue, it is also known as fur tongue. It is the result of retention of hyperkeratosis of filiform papillae on the anterior two, two third of the dorsal aspect of the tongue there could be fissure tongue geographic tongue is asymptomatic and nothing need to be done but if there is an inflammatory condition then you have to can give a treatment there could be fissure tongue which is common in elderly psoriatic patients strawberry tongue they are seen in scarlet fever this could be in another question so now coming to the inspection of abdomen so as i have already told in the surgical examination of abdomen that you have to examine the abdomen in 13 quadrants nine quadrants of the abdomen plus genitalia renal angle supraclavicular region and perineum for this inspection of the abdomen uh, you can make the patient to lie down arms by the side expose the patient from the nipple area till the inguinal ligament or the syphilis opening and examiner have to sit on uh, stand on the right side of the patient this uh, this thing you have to take precautions always patient you know, examiners might even ask you to okay show me uh, how you did this sign or that sign so always make sure you have to stand on the right side of the patient so in the inspection of abdomen Mention talk about the uh, shape of the abdomen whether it's scaphoid, local or generalized any distension is there or not full uh, general fullness could be there of the abdomen could be due to the fat fluid of flatus localized distension could be there of liver or spleen or ovary or any other swelling or there is any small bowel obstruction then men talk about the skin whenever there is an abdomen uh, distension is there it will cause stretching or uh, of the skin which will cause stretched and shiny skin like if there is a tense ascites always mention the skin of the abdomen is stretched and shiny scaphoid abdomen generally the shape of the abdomen is, is scaphoid it could be normal in case of the patient is very very thin but generally seen in case of TB or malnourished mm -hmm. patient now, talk about flanks are free or full in case of ascites it is very important the flanks would be full in case of tense ascites there could be also patient can have umbilical hernia or diastasis of hernia uh, talk about umbilicus whether it is in position uh, what is its position how is the slit how is the shape of the umbilicus whether is there is any discoloration or any nodule nearby the umbilicus which is called as sister 
मैरी जोसेफ नोड्यूल आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन एबडमन सर्जिकल वीडियो देन टॉक अबाउट एनी एनी अम्बलिकल हर्निया और नॉट नॉर्मली अम्बलिकस इज इन मिड पोजिशन स्लाइटली रिट्रैक्टेड एंड इन्वर्टेड दिस इज द नॉर्मल अम्बलिकस अम्बलिकस इज इवर्टेड इन केस ऑफ अम्बलिकल हर्निया अम्बलिकल स्लिट इज हॉरिजेंटल और स्माइलिंग इन केस ऑफ सिरोसिस ऑफ लिवर अम्बलिकस इज वर्टिकल अम्बलिकल स्लिट अम्बलिकल स्लिट इज वर्टिकल इन केस ऑफ ओवेरियन और पेल्विक ट्यूमर दिस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड टेनॉल साइन टेनियॉल साइन वट इज देयर इन टेनियॉल साइन इज दैट देर इज अ डाउनवर्ड डिसप्लेसमेंट ऑफ अम्बलिकस इन केस ऑफ एसाइटिस then you have to talk about any visible uh, dilated veins then you have to see whether the abdomen is moving with respiration or not generally it is silent in case of peritonitis or any infection or inflammation of the abdomen for dilated veins you have to make sure patient is standing don't comment on dilated veins while while the patient is lying down we we'll talk about visible peristalsis seen in any gastric obstruction scars pregnancy mark is there or not look at the supraclavicular reason comment about that free or full or any lymph node you can there is there any fullness you can see uh, talk about the hernia orifice free or not you can ask the patient to also cuff if see is there any swelling coming up and i have to examine external genitalia atrophy of uh, uh, atrophy of testis in male you can see in case of the due to the liver cell failure if there is any swelling of Uh, testis if it is uh, primarily it could be due to tumor hydrocele or hernia uh, there could be uh, secondary swellings like leukemia in case of all cll testicular swelling could be there and comment about whether the renal angle is free or not then the second part is the measurement so you have to do you have to measure the these three things using a measuring tape in centimeters so you have to mention abdominal girth is very important you have to measure at the umbilicus level and umbilical girth is specially measured in case of a prognostic marker in acute abdomen and like if there is a acute abdomen and the patient is being treated with uh, the treatment abdomen girth will reduce if there is a increase in girth like if you have a previous measurement and every day you are seeing there is an increase in girth it could be there like ascites is increasing the whatever is the etiology the disease is progressing ahead and measurement tells the location of the pathology like how we have to measure the umbilicus to xiphoid and umbilicus to pubic symphysis generally umbilicus is in mid position if there is a umbilical displacement downward then the etiology could be toward the liver side if the umbilicus is displayed upward it could be due to the ovarian or pelvic tumor then spino umbilical measurement normally umbilicus is equidistant from anterior superior iliac spine if the umbilicus is not equidistant toward one side then wherever you can see whichever side if the umbilicus is shifted more toward the right then the etiology on the left there is some swelling or tumor so same goes for the vice versa for the other side then comment about engorged veins or the dilated veins i always said patient have to be in standing position if lying down ask the patient if the patient is like bedridden cannot stand up then ask the patient to do valsava maneuver if needed you can ask the patient or the attendant to help you in conducting this examination most of the time students get confused with this like which direction is the vein and how to say the diagnosis what happens is nearby the uh, abdomen nearby the umbilicus there is anastomosis between superior epigastric vein there is superficial circumflex vein uh, iliac vein there is lateral thoracic vein these three major veins is there in portal hypertension due to the cirrhosis there will be dilatation of para umbilical veins which looks like caput medusa like radiating like a star away from the umbilicus if it is seen then you can see the major cause is due to portal hypertension due to the liver cirrhosis but rarely you will see this uh, in the in your clinical experience so coming back to here what we do is 
So coming to this, what we have done is we select a vein of 3 cm long with no tributaries above the umbilicus. This is what we are doing and milk it by both the index finger remove the lower finger if the vein is still collapsed then the flow is from above to downwards if the vein quickly fills up then the flow is from below to upward and then second time again remove the upper finger if the vein remains collapsed then the flow is from below to up if the vein quickly fills in by lifting the upper finger then the flow is from above to downward you have to again follow the same procedure below the umbilicus then you will have come up with this finding like it is radiating then flow is away from the umbilicus in both the segment could be due to the portal hypertension if the flow is above if all the veins are in up direction could be due to the ivc obstruction if the flow is from above to downwards in both the segment then it could be due to the SVC obstruction. This is what you have to remember. If the veins are not engorged uh, while the patient is standing up or not seen dilated, then do then mention it. Patient veins are not dilated and we have not done this. So uh, this is a very important thing, which is palpation of abdomen. What you have to make sure is that you have to relax the patient. And how do you relax the patient? Is make the patient to lie down and tell him to flex his hip and knee okay this flexion is very very important why this flexion is very very important is so the abdomen muscle do not go into spasm patient have to be in supine with semi flex leg why because it will relax the abdomen muscle why because tensor fascia later is relaxed as it is attached with inguinal ligament if you do not semi flex the hip and knee what will happen is there is anterior abdomen wall will be tense and you won't be able to examine or appreciate the abdominal content well so this is very very important you have to be on right side of the patient again informing you patient have to be lying down supine uh, there why this palpation techniques are very important one is superficial or light palpation in that uh, you have to what you have to do is uh, you have to use the flexor surface of finger and light pressure is given and generally we do it for checking the abdomen warmth tenderness uh, uh, or whether there is any guarding or rigidity then you do a deep uh, palpation in which you use the waller surface of your fingers more pressure is exerted in each expiration like this is done generally to palpate liver spleen or kidneys and other organs and sometimes people use a double hand technique what they do is they use the upper hand for pressure and the lower hand to uh, feel or palpate the organs for a deep palpation if it is a child uh, what you can do is uh, you can palpate his abdomen with his own using his own hand generally it's, it's said like uh, when the when you are doing a deep palpation light palpation you can ask the patient to turn toward left like you are on the right side of the patient ask the patient to turn left and breathe to uh, through using his mouth or uh, toward the left side if the patient is looking toward the examiner the breath of the patient will directly go toward the patient uh, examiner's face so you to deal with that ask the patient to turn left and breathe uh, there is a dipping method of palpation which is done a quick push finger pulp in the abdomen then in case of tensor ascites these palpations you have to do in a systematic organs like, like you can start on the left iliac fossa and then go toward the right iliac fossa like this you can do or else you can start at right iliac fossa and go toward the left iliac fossa you have to palpate the groin and also examine the external genitalia. Sometimes people also use which is called Nicholson's maneuver. What they do is you exert the pressure on the lower sternum with your palm. So the thoracic movement is stopped and the patient breathes through uh, abdomen breathing is done. Abdomen movements are seen. And during this time uh, you can palpate the organs. Abdominal organs are easily to examine. So the first in the superficial light uh, palpation of ab abdomen is you have to look at the abdomen warmth how do you look at the warmth or the temperature is assessed using the back of the fingers in all the quadrants then compare it over the chest or other the or over the other body parts and then say whether the, whether there is any local raise or uh, of the temperature at particular site of or else there is no other local raise generally local rise of the temperature might be there in case of uh, localized etiology like there is an infection or inflammation you have to then comment about the consistency consistency why normally it is elastic or it is 
टेंस इन केस ऑफ एसाइटिस और देर इज रिजिट और डोवी फीलिंग दिस डोवी फीलिंग इज देर इन केस ऑफ टी बी पेरेटोनाइटिस यू हैव टू लुक एट द टेंडेनेस वेदर देर इज एनी एबडम टेंडेनेस इज देयर इन सुपरफिशियल एग्जामिनेशन और नॉट generally uh, you have to assess mainly tenderness at macburney's point at gall bladder point at epigastric region and in renal angle uh, then you have to uh, look at the and whether there is any guarding or rigidity or any pulsation felt or not generally if everything is normal it is uh, how you will uh, present this uh, finding is that on palpation abdomen is soft there is no guarding no rigidity no local rise of temperature or any tenderness you have to also look at parietal edema whether it is present or absent it could be there in case of uh, an asarc of ne- nephrotic syndrome how do you assess parietal edema is that you have to pinch the skin at the flank with right thumb and index finger for few seconds or for, say around 5 seconds then look for whether there is any pitting edema is there or not while assessing the tenderness you have to look at the patient face if there is any wincing then you can say okay there is some tenderness so this is a very important slide method of palpation of liver there are four important methods conventional alternative preferred or dipping method so what happens in conventional we always start the palpation of for liver from the right iliac fossa side now the question arises why do you start at right iliac fossa because that is the same direction in which liver will enlarge and a, a enlarged liver might be missed if we do not examine from the right iliac fossa so in conventional method you have to start at the right iliac fossa right hand is placed parallel to the arbitrary lower border of the liver avoid placing it over the rectus abdominis right border of the index finger will slip over the lower border of the liver or feel for the movement of liver edge under the palm with each uh, respiration then is the alternative where the fingers are pointing upwards and positioning uh, sensing fingers index and middle finger lateral to the rectus muscles uh, and remember during the examination you have to wait for the one full phase of respiration then continue laterally then there is a preferred method where fingers are pointing upward toward the rib at right hypochondriac region then there is dipping method done in case of ascites where there is a you have to dip the fingers except the thumb gently downward with each inspiration so in the palpation of river what we do is uh, how do you present is that is on palpation a resistance or a mass is felt in the right hypochondriac region liver or that the mass was this much centimeter below the costal margin in the right mid, mid clavicular line whether you are able to appreciate the upper border or lower border of the mass or not whether you are able to insuate your finger between the mass or costal margin or not whether it moves with the respiration or not so all these findings you have to say then you have to say okay this is suggestive of liver this is suggestive of some other mass then talk about the edge whether it is sharp rounded or irregular talk about the surface smooth regular smooth grand granular nodular irregular whether it is tender or non tender generally in children below 3 years of age liver might be palpable 2 to 3 fingers breadth and generally in case of ch- pediatrics um, cases we say liver is palpable we never say liver is enlarged okay this is just a tip and healthy individual and thin individuals also liver can be palpable just below the costal margins whenever we say of liver tenderness which could be seen in liver viral hepatitis or congestive cardiac failure hepatocellular carcinoma abscess or infection liver tenderness is there due to the acute liver enlargement due to the stretching of glycens capsule and it is associated with inflammation or acute congestion so almost always cirrhotic liver or malignancies are non tender tenderness in liver in malignancy could be due to if there is any hemorrhage or coexisting inflammation is there then liver would be tender and see consistency you have to say soft firm or half generally it is said if it is soft feels like your lip firm feel like your nose hard feel like your forehead okay this is the consistency if the liver is uh, soft then the margins would be mostly round if the uh, consistency is firm or hard then then the liver will mostly have will have a sharp margin like a palm leaf yeah if we talk about the normal liver normal liver is soft in consistency it has round edges and uh, generally when we say stony hard consistency it is seen in 
कार्सिनोमास और सेकेंडरी मेटेस्टिस सो हेर आर जनरल अदर फाइंडिंग्स लाइक लाइक इफ यू सी लिवर इज स्मूथ और सॉफ्ट और टेंडर देन इट कुड बी ड्यू टू एक्यूट वायरल हेपेटाइटिस और अदर कॉजेस देन इज द पल्सटाइल लिवर सिस्टोलिक पल्सेशन इन केस ऑफ टी आर ए आर डेस्टोलिक इन ट्राइकस्पिट स्टेनोसिस हाउ डू यू असेस द पल्सटाइल लिवर वन मैथड इज टू फिंगर मैथड द अदर इज थम मैथड देन इज फिस्ट पिस्टन मैथड देन देर इज बाई मैनुअल मैथड इन बाई मैनुअल मैथड राइट हैंड इज एंटीरियर एंड द लेफ्ट हैंड इज पोस्टीरियरली जनरली राइट हैंड ओवर द लेवर बॉर्डर एंड लेफ्ट हैंड ओवर द राइट लोअर इंटरकॉस्टल स्पेस पेशेंट इज आस्ट टू होल्ड द ब्रेथ सो द रेस्परेटरी मूवमेंट्स डू नॉट डिस्टर्ब द पल्सेशन If the river pulsation is coinciding with the JVP, you have to look at the JVP. If it is coincides with the A wave, then it is pre-systolic. Or if if they occur after the A wave, then they are systolic. Most common cause of pulsatile liver is congestive cardiac failure. You have to look at the left lobe whether it is enlarged or not. Look at which could be due to maybe abscess, met mets, or any hepatoma or gum of liver. any palpable hepatic rub is there or not so now this comes a very important lessons to learn palpable liver is not synonym with enlarged liver a palpable liver may may not be pathological but an enlarged liver is always pathological basically we what we are knowing is if the liver is enlarged if you are using the word enlarged then liver span has to be increased If you are saying liver is just palpable, it could be there. It is an enlarged liver, but it is not always pathologically due to the liver. So this is what you have to remember. Okay, if the liver is palpable, so there are conditions where the liver is palpable, but the etiology it is not pathologically due to the liver. So for enlarged liver, you have to always look at the liver span. I'll tell you what are the causes. so certain places where pal- liver is palpable is visceral ptosis there could be downward displacement in case of emphysema right pleural effusion right sided pneumothorax or severe kyphos kyphos scoliosis liver span is shrunken so liver span is shrunken it could be due to the cirrhosis of liver so now we are talking about enlarged liver it means the liver span is enlarged and where how do you confirm the liver span by percussion on examination or by ultrasound so what we see is uh, most common cause most common cause of liver enlargement is alcoholic liver disease nefld uh, there could be viral hepatitis or ca- cancers of liver in the early stage what happens in early stage of liver cirrhosis liver might be palpable liver might be firm tender nodular in late stages of cirrhosis in the late uh, st- stages liver span would be enlarged in late stage liver span will be reduced in case of cirrhosis so these are the other causes like cancer genetic causes cardiovascular causes cardiac cirrhosis due to the right heart dysfunction is common then is could be an infection toxics if the liver is enlarged and painful then you have to think of these conditions like congestive cardiac failure viral hepatitis hepatic am- amebiasis you have to think of any other abscess is there hepatoma acid actinomycosis is there or any liver secondary or bercheri syndrome so all these things will cause pain full liver enlargement then you can look at the hepatojugular reflex hepatojugular reflex is uh, done in patients with non elevated gvp but visible patient have to be in 30 degree incli- inclination position where you have to press lightly over the right hypochondriac region for 10 second and see whether there is any increase in gvp normally uh, there could be temporary rise of for two heart beats and then normal within 10 seconds if it is more than 4 cm then it could be due to mark right heart failure or tricuspid regurgitation it could be absent or reduced in case of uh, bercheri syndrome or ivc or uh, superior vena cava obstruction you have to palpate for gall bladder i already told in the abdomen examination of surgical videos that gall bladder is seen better than palpated you have to if you see the obstructive jaundice video you will learn about murphy's sign uh, corvoisier's law 
there is something called Riedel's lobe of river. What is happens? It is an anatomical variation. It is a tongue-like projection of the right lobe of the river, commonly found in female, and it will move with respiration. And most of the time, it can be mistaken for gallbladder. Now coming up for the spleen. Again, classical method, bimanual method. When there is just palpable spleen, then you can examine when the patient is in right lateral position with left hip and knee flexed and you examine the spleen by hooked fingers if you examine by for just palpable uh, spleen class by classical hooking method of the left hand under the cost margin then it is called middle tense method dipping method in case of ascites what happens is sharp tap is given by flexing the metocarpal phalangeal joint suddenly this is what sometimes they can even ask you what happens in displace, dipping method is there is sudden displacement of abdomen fluid which gives a tapping sensation over the enlarged organ and description of the or, uh, organ you may not well appreciate and then you, you can you can mention it i did if the patient is having ascites you can say i try to feel but i could not well appreciate uh, the spleen in the dipping method while doing a classical method palpating from the right iliac fossa to left hypochondriac they might ask you why spleen is enlarging from in this direction not spleen is not enlarging in the down, downward direction if this is the abdomen and now so why the spleen is enlarging in this this is because due to the left colonic flexure and phrenoclonic ligaments that prevents the downward displacement so because of these two ligament uh, left colonic flexure and phrenicocolic ligament spleen moves from towards the right iliac fossa so you have to start examining from the right iliac fossa toward the left hypochondria you have to wait for one full phase re respiration and in the classical method at the height of inspiration you release the pressure of examining hand of uh, so fingertips slip over the lower pole and you can ask the patient to breathe slowly with open mouth uh, like unlike your liver Palpable spleen is always means splenomegaly. Okay, this is ulta, opposite of the things which we learned in the liver section. If there is a palpable spleen, you have to think it is uh, enlarged. And generally, it is around 3 to 6 percent of the people they say spleen can be palpable. If a palpable spleen is there, then think spleen has enlarged by almost 1.5 to 3 times. There is a enlargement of spleen is there so yeah you have to also describe it like mass is felt in the left hypochondriac region or in the left lumbar region this was this centimeter uh, below the costal margin in the long axis which is mid clavicular line and you can talk about the consistency uh, generally spleen will have rounded borders and will have a characteristic notch which will move with respiration and is non palpable it cannot be palpated by manually and the upper uh, pole cannot be felt uh, spleen is generally non tender and can be self can be said as soft in consistency if the spleen is not palpable say spleen is not palpable do not use the word as spleen is not enlarged be very careful with your terms what you use because we are uh, in, in a medical profession where we use the science and we have to say scientific words and you have to be very careful with your vocabulary you have to talk about the consistency of spleen spleen is kind of soft then it could be due to any congestion uh, seen in case of portal hypertension if there is any firm uh, spleen which could be due to the infiltration seen in leukemia soft in case of portal hypertension if there is any hard spleen it could be due to the tumor like lymphoma you have to talk about whether spleen is uh, any tenderness is there or not it could be there any any splenic infarcts and uh, if there is any spleen enlargement plus any tenderness is there then you can think also of epstein bar virus infection infarction uh, endocarditis or think of any sickle cell anemia this is a very common uh, viva question they will ask you how to say whether what you palpated was a spleen not kidney what happens is spleen, uh, kidney will uh, enlarge forward and directionally downward toward the uh, iliac fossa and the direction of spleen i have already told you splenic swelling will be smooth uniform and anterior border will have one to two notch which is very characteristic kidney will have not notch no notch it will move less or not with respiration it will move freely 
okay palpate uh, palpated easily from the anterior aspect it palpated easily from the posterior hand can be insulated between the swelling and the costal margin hand cannot be insulated it is dull on percussion colonic resonance is there so it could be uh, resonant in percussion loin is just little to the erector spine is full loin just little to the erector spine is resonant no palpable upper border palatable by manually palpable so sometimes we have to remember the golden rules of abdomen this i have already told uh, in your right iliac fossa mass video of uh, abdomen generally if it is intra abdominal mass any mass inside the abdomen will move freely with respiration will f uh, fall freely in knee elbow or left lateral exaggerated position any mass which is retroperitoneal will does not move with respiration no intrinsic mobility and does not feel uh, fall freely in knee elbow position exception to this golden rule is kidney some part of uh, kidney and tail of pancreas like having pseudo cyst or any tumor can move uh, with respiration to certain extent uh, golden rule is for retroperitoneal masses only this intraperitoneal mass rule is derived from the golden rules of abdomen this generally they say if any um, senior professor come they would like to have this in your viva so then you can say golden rules for the retroperitoneal masses so this is very important slide uh, generally i have put it up in the notes like all this whole performa you can download in the link given in the description box of this video what is there is massive splenomegaly moderate splenomegaly and mild splenomegaly what is the causes i have taken mild as less than 3 cm moderate as 3 to 7 cm and massive as more than 7 cm this is the reference of hutchinson so this all this is the from the hutchinson the other book somewhere you will find more than 8 cm as massive 4 to 8 as moderate and mild as 1 to 4 cm that you can see most of the people define splenomegaly when it reaches the um, iliac crest or crosses the midline or weighs more than 1.5 kg if it is more than 1.5 kg or the, or the total size where the spleen span is more than 15 to 20 cm where it reaches the iliac crest or crosses midline this is the definition the normal adult spleen is around uh, 70 to 200 g and a normal uh, size of the spleen is around up to 12 cm in cranio caudal length okay this is a normal so they if when you are describing about splenomegaly that time they may ask you what is the normal spleen and all so looking at the causes you can also describe it as hematological causes in which hematolytic anemia is most of the common cause egyptian splenomegaly felty syndrome tumor trauma metastasis giant abscess drugs generally patient with porphyria will present with intestinal colic pain with constipation then on examination you can have as you can see this anemia neurologic or mental symptoms uh, sometime they may ask you what is hyposplenism or when the spleen is not there it could be seen uh, whether the spleen is absent or non functioning spleen so this could be seen if there is a dextrocardia or in case of there is a autosplenectomy then in uh, happens in sickle cell anemia or there is any surgical removal spleen or else there is any fanconi anemia what happens in fanconi anemia there is a hypoplasia of the thumb or the radii or there could be any celiac disease where the spleen is absent or non functioning spleen some uh, if sometime they may ask you where if there is a spleen enlargement is there and jaundice is there then what could be the differential diagnosis then the diagnosis could be cirrhosis of liver there could be acute malaria there could be hemolytic anemia there could be lymphoma there could be acute viral hepatitis or miliary tb another combination which uh, you might see is splenomegaly with some petty case there then you can think of acute leukemia you can think of sbe sle then this is the causes of hepatosplenomegaly uh, where the where the spleen is small and the liver is large like ccf acute liver mets polycystic where the liver spleen is also large liver is also large then myeloproliferative disorders spleen is large liver is small kala is there tss this is just one combinations in in children you have to think of separate other causes adults separate causes older separate causes uh, hepatosplenomegaly with jaundice 
we have to think of these differentials with favors other with lymphadenopathy other causes these causes with ascites these causes with anemia these causes these are the various combinations so we have to always you have to match this is there this is there this is there this could be the diagnosis this could this is there this is not there then this could be the diagnosis so all this combinations you have to feed in your brain algorithm this will help you to diagnose a patient early then causes of hepatosplenomegaly infections uh, hematological disorder congestive stage storage or infiltration disorders just to mention about CLL generally CLL is seen as more than 60 years of old will be more common in Caucasian there will be no bleeding of fever um, there will be generalized lymphadenopathy associated with cold agglutin hemo uh, induced hemolytic anemia then continuing the deep palpation you have to also examine the right kidney left kidney with bimanual palpation urinary bladder colon or any lump any para aortic uh, aortic or common iliac lymph node vessels whether is there any mass or not uh, hernia orifice and external genitalia there could be palpable aorta in case of aneurysm abdomen lymph nodes will be palpable more in case of non hodgkins lymphoma then moving towards the percussion as i already told percussion is very important to uh, in case of liver whether it is a hepatomegaly or not so all the palpable livers are not hepatomegaly you have to confirm the liver size by percussion in case of fulminant uh, hepatic failure daily percussion of liver span can gives you an idea of severity of the disease absence of liver dullness in case of acute liver uh, acute abdomen points toward gas under the diaphragm so for the liver span you should know what is the normal so liver span on tidal percussion uh, the would be around 12 to 15 it depends on the height of the patient also for the percussion of liver what you have to do is you have to percuss along the right mid clavicular line start from the second intercostal then find the lower border of the lung as soon you find uh, the dullness that would be around fifth intercostal space that is the upper border of the liver then from there you mark and then see till where the dullness is there that is the liver uh, span at the right mid clavicular line you have to see then uh, percussion uh, for the spleen in the next slide we'll be seeing various percussion method for spleen percuss for kidney bladder flank dullness is there or not in case of ascites in case of ascites you might find horseshoe dullness but what is this horseshoe dullness is when the patient is lying down so the all the fluid is toward the flank and the dependent part so this epigastric and nearby the umbilicus area uh, area will be tympanic and this part will be dull so this is called horseshoe dullness this could be seen in minimal or moderate ascites uh, in ascites you have to also look at the fluid thrills shifting dullness puddle sign which is done in knee elbow position which is not outdated and for minimal uh, fluid you need around 125 ml this just can be asked in the viva but you don't have to do pedal sign because it is kind of embarrassing for the patient to be put up in knee elbow position and then you percuss so coming to the percussion of spleen uh, you have to first percuss at the drop space which is at the left mid axillary line between 6th and 9th rib if there is any dullness think of splenomegaly what is the content of drop space this is what they might ask which is the fundus of stomach so at the mid axillary line if there is uh, generally there is a fundus so it be resonant if it is dull think of splenomegaly generally with the spleen they might ask you uh, what is the axis of spleen so the axis of spleen is around the 10th rib and spleen lies on the posterior lateral wall from 9th to 11th rib then is the castel method castel method patient lies in supine position you have to percuss on the anterior axial line lowest around um, eighth rib uh, intercostal space if you find dullness then think of splenomegaly note that if there is any change from resonant in expiration to dullness like during the expiration if it is resonant and during inspiration it is dull then it is positive it will be considered as positive only at the end the eighth intercostal space and you have to think of splenomegaly 
Nixon method it is the most sensitive generally they say and patient lies in right lateral position at the post axillary line you have to percuss from the fourth intercostal space which is the four, uh, lowest border of the lower border of the lung and you have to percuss toward umbilicus and then you have to size the measure of dullness if it is more than 8 cm you have to think of splenomegaly then is the shifting dullness this is very important to know in and to do in case of ascites because it is the confirmatory sign in examination for ascites what else could be the other sign of ascites would be uh, like uh, shifting dullness and if you do a paracentesis if the fluid comes out that is also a confirmatory sign for ascites minimum to elicit shifting dullness they say is around 1 to 1.5 liter of fluid should be there uh, how do we elicit is patient is lying in the supine position you have to percuss from the epigastric and come till umbilicus where the most resonant is there then come laterally toward the side and wherever you find the dullness stop there you ask the patient to roll over on the toward the other side wait for 20 seconds the fluid will shuttle down toward the other side and then again percuss on the same spot you don't have to move your finger there and if it becomes resonant then shifting dullness is there and this you have to confirm on the opposite side also if it is opposite side there then you have to think of bilateral you have to confirm then it is ascites it means fluid is there or if it reappears when or when the patient turns back to the normal side and the dullness reappears on the same side then again you can confirm that it is due to ascites generally they might ask you if there is unilateral shifting dullness that could be there there due to ovarian cyst or due to splenic rupture if it is due to splenic rupture we just call it also call it as balance sign in what happens is there is a blood present in the left quadrant so only the left side will have the shifting dullness in case of splenic rupture sometimes they may ask you what is the cause of cause of false positive shifting dullness it means there is no uh, fluid in the abdomen there is no ascites but shifting dullness is there then it could be due to the abnormal retention of enema shifting dullness inside uh, ascending or descending colon or it could be due to paralytic ileus which is rare or could be due to an ovarian cyst they might also ask you what is the cause of false negative when there is fluid is there in the abdomen but there is no shifting dullness it could be uh, there uh, in case of encysted fluid like there is a loculated ascites or ovarian cyst is there or there is a small collection of free fluid At that time that could be false negative how do you assess for fluid thrill is patient is lying in the supine position you ask the uh, patient or assistant to keep his hand firmly in the midline of the abdomen why this is done is to dampen any impulse transmitted by fat okay so and place your left hand over the left lumbar region of the patient flick a finger on the flick a finger on the right hand uh, against the right lumbar and on the left hand you can feel a ripple okay in the palpating hand so then you can say fluid thrill is present generally it is seen in huge or massive ascites when the fluid is more than 2 liter and uh, when there is when the abdomen is full of fluid remember that time thrill will be there and shifting dullness will be absent because the shift for shifting dullness the other side of the abdomen should be free you know where the fluid will go if there is no free space then how shifting dullness will be there so this thing you have to keep in remember if it is a tense ascites and you think whole abdomen is filled with fluid there is no empty space there will be no shifting dullness but fluid thrill will be there this fluid thrill is generally seen in tense ascites i have already told ovarian cyst pregnancy with polyhydromnia you can find it there could be large intra abdominal cyst that time also you can see uh, this is the this is a very important uh, this is a viva question generally they may ask how do you define whether it's ascites or is it to any ovarian cyst so based on umbilical slit you can see whether umbilical is everted and transverse slit ascites ovarian vertical slit uh, whether any dullness is there on anterior or not res it will be resonant anterior both bilateral flanks would be full and dull in case of ascites okay and there will be no shifting dullness or unilateral shifting dullness could be there in ovarian here there will be presence of shifting dullness bilateral okay uniform swelling a for a uh, asymmetrical equal spinoumbilical distance there will be an unequal spinoumbilical distance 
these are the causes of ascites you can see uh, non peritoneal causes and peritoneal and you have to remember ascites is accumulation of free fluid in the peritoneal cavity this is a standard definition free fluid in the peritoneal cavity and generally most of the book like they will say to pick it uh, to pick up uh, ascites clinically um, the oxford book says around 1.5 liter fluid should be there harrison says around 500 ml fluid is can be picked up minimally so it varies here we can discuss about bird cherry syndrome in bird cherry syndrome there is a caudal lobe enlargement mass could be felt in epigastric region there is hepatic vein obstruction therefore no hepatojugular reflex ascites plus abdomen pain plus hepatosplenomegaly so this is cause of anasarca like if it is acute could be due to nephrotic syndrome anasarca is generalized swelling of the whole body plus there is a genital swelling the cause is mainly is due to the uh, hyperproteinemia ascites and portal hypertension hyperaldosteronism and when there is a water retention hyperproteinemia is the most common cause in subacute coming to the auscultation in auscultation you have to auscultate for 1 to 3 minutes nearby the umbilicus or the right iliac fossa normal peristalsis bowel sound we can be heard how is the normal bowel sound normal bowel sound are intermittent low or medium pitched gurgle mixed with occasionally high pitched tinkle there could be increased bowel sound in case of intestinal obstruction diarrhea ibd upper gi bleed malabsorption carcinoid syndrome uh it could be absent in case of paralytic ileus peritonitis mesenteric ischemia or pancreatitis then in auscultations if you can find any venous hum just below the xiphoid it could be due to splenomegaly with portal hypertension uh which we always can also call as can we sign if it is just below the xiphoid uh if it is just below the xiphi sternum and umbilicus it could be in portal hypertension due to recanalization of umbilical vein or due to the formation of collateral we call it as curvy helios baumgarten syndrome if you can hear the bruit over the abdominal aorta due to aortic aneurysm in midline uh, in transpyloric pain due to renal artery stenosis common iliac artery due to stenosis or, or aneurysm uh, at liver due to hemangioma at cc hepatocellular carcinoma av fistula spleen hemangioma coronary artery stenosis or pancreatic is carcinoma splenic hum is generally always diastolic there could be friction rub due to the inflammation of liver or spleen so there is something called liver scratch sign this is a quick way to diagnose here, hepatomegaly like you have to scratch your fingernail on the abdominal wall keep the stethoscope a fixed distance from the fingernail and slowly move it up when the liver border is enlarged the sound will intensify because solid conducts sound faster this sometimes in the viva they might ask you then coming to parietal examination you have to look for any anal fissure hemorrhoid or excursion what you have to do before doing the parietal examination is lubricate the gloved index finger of your right hand mostly with lignocaine jelly place it at the pulp of finger on the anus not the tip of the finger but the pulp of your finger then you have to comment on the perianal area anal tone anal and rectal Uh, mucosa sacrum coccyx pelvic side wall any fecal mass or any abnormality when you withdraw the finger look for any mucus pus blood or any stained finger and you have to also comment on rectovesicular or rectovaginal mass or any fullness was seen or the appreciated or not uh, you have then you have to do the examination of other system like respiratory and cardiovascular generally if there is a amoebic liver abscess so what will happen on the chest is there will be intercostal bulge or tenderness in the intercostal space and in liver abscess uh, amoebic liver abscess you already know there will be history of uh, amoebic history mostly would be male alcoholic patients and uh, you have to differentiate this intercostal tenderness from acute cholecystitis in abdomen there are generally two important syndrome uh, which they say is one is hepatorenal syndrome and one is hepatopulmonary syndrome what happens in hepatorenal syndrome is just for clinical knowledge that creatinine is increased more than 1.5 and then there is a type 1 versus type 2 type of uh, sub classification in hepatopulmonary there is platypnea and orthodexia 
so cns examination could be very important if you see any patient with ascites or any hepatic uh, cell liver liver cell failure then you have to do cns examination because a patient might have hepatic encephalopathy for this you have to also do a grading or staging of hepatic encephalopathy which is west haven grading generally it has four stages euphoria lethargy marked confusion and coma and uh, hepatic encephalopathy is mostly the diagnosis of exclusion but it will have a combination of jaundice there will be portal hypertension or ascites what we say which could be presenting in form of ascites and then will have cns involvement in that uh, what you can see patient might have any of these patient might have uh, dysarthria alexia or exaggerated reflexes they could be flapping tremor or asterixis which is a sign of liver cell failure how do you examine for flapping tremors is uh, that uh, you have to ask the patient to stretch the arms in hyper extended by wrist and fingers separated okay this is a most kind of a most definite sign and you have to see for flapping tremors in the arms if it is bilateral then only you have to think as causes hepatic encephalopathy but it could be also seen as type 2 uh, respiratory failure it could be also seen as renal failure when where there is a uremia there could be hypokalemia or hypomagnesia there also you can find phenytoin toxicity or uh, gabapentin valproate carbamazepine uh, these all drug toxic toxicity can also cause you this bilateral flap asterixis or flapping tremor what could be the causes of unilateral it could be mostly due to the cns pathologies like focal lesions in corona radiata aca territory or any primary motor con- cortex or cerebellum is affected that time you can have unilateral uh why this uh, asterixis or flapping tremor happens is that because there is a loss of extra pyramidal system there is impaired inflow of the joint position and the other information to the brain brain reticular system uh, is impaired which will result in impaired postures that is why you can see uh, this sign then you can see constructional apraxia which is inability to reprodu- uh, reproduce pattern but all pattern generally we ask them to make it is like draw a star we, which we can call as a archimedes star or we can ask them to draw a clock is there any cirrhosis or plus extra pyramidal effects are seen then you can also think of wilson's disease where hepatolenticular degeneration is there it could also occur if uh, in alcoholic who having magnesium toxicity in wilson disease you can also find neuropsychiatric disorders or patient will have hepatitis and in i already told you kf ring or cat sunflower cataract you can find so this is how you will have to say uh, the diagnosis like patient is having acute or chronic liver disease chronic generally we say when it is more than 6 months and in that in chronic it is more than 6 months and remember in chronic liver disease liver would be shrunken so hepatomegaly will not be there in chronic uh, there might be splenomegaly plus ascites will be there in case of acute liver disease liver would be palpable or enlarged and it might be tender also okay so you have to say with features of portal hypertension with or without signs of liver cell failure in that time they may ask you compensated or decompensated generally when we say decompensated liver disease when the patient is having ascites plus jaundice or or any hepatoencephalopathy or variceal bleed is there variceal bleed cannot uh bleed only cannot be the feature of decompensated okay and when we say ascites ascites is combination of can be said, said as combination of liver cirrhosis plus portal hypertension uh, there are certain condition which if there is a splenomegaly for example if spleen was enlarged then there are certain condition which you can exclude by the presence of uh, enlarged spleen which is like itp so this is just a promotion of the kindle ebooks which i have on amazon and this is the list of important question to pass general medicine for mbbs students which have uh, includes questions for psychiatry and questions from dermat also you can go link is given in the description you can go and check this out 
this is a free sex education book a link is also will be given in the description uh, if you want to have a free ebook will be there to buy the purchase the hard book you have to go on notion press website and use this coupon code for 25 percent off it is also there in android app so these are the common differential diagnosis scenarios if there is a hepatomegaly with jaundice what all you have to think you have to think of acute viral hepatitis hemolytic anemia secondaries of liver cirrhosis of liver wheels disease lymphoma acute cholangiohepatitis if there is a liver en uh, enlargement with cirrhosis then you have to think of acute liver disease you have to think of hematochromosis which is mainly seen in males there is excessive iron deposit there could be bird cherry syndrome what could be the causes of spleen enlargement plus ascites and no jaundice that uh, for that you can think of non serotic portal fibrosis extra hepatic portal obstruction think causes of anemia with ictrus plus splenomegaly you can uh, find it hemolytic anemia malaria acute or chronic malaria uh, generally may not will have jaundice can think of infective endocarditis can think of malaria infective endocarditis tb toxoplasma lymphoma or leukemia or wilson's disease hepatomegaly with lymph node enlargement you can think of infectious mononucleosis which is e caused by epstein barr virus think of tb lymphoma or any sarcoidosis fever with jaundice malaria leptospira typhus and then causes of hepatomegaly with right heart failure you can think of right ventricular failure constructive pericarditis think of hemochromatosis alcoholic liver disease with uh, cardiomyopathy so let's now moving on to viva question these are now very important so the most common would be this only how will you what is the diagnosis why do you say so why this is not this what could be differential diagnosis these are important and then there will be how will you investigate and manage this patient they might ask you surface marking of abdominal organ like your liver spleen kidney uh, gallbladder they might ask you difference between hodgkin non hodgkin tumor lysis syndrome and differentiate and management of aml and cml uh, crohn disease alcoholism toxicity stages management ammonia in hepatic encephalopathy generally it is seen that spleen enlarges in myeloid series dysfunction and spleen enlarges in myeloid series dysfunction and liver generally increases in lymphoid series infection dysfunction uh, spleen has a role of creator because we know spleen has a embryonic hematopoiesis spleen protects because it clears the antigen spleen is destroy like rbc is like three dev okay in of hindu mythology then is the cirrhosis this is what is the definition of cirrhosis how do you classify micro macro etiology uh, clinical uh, features of cirrhosis will be compensated or decompensated decompensated i already told will have complications like ascites variceal bleeding jaundice or hepatic encephalopathy so this is the stages of fibrosis and this is the stages of cirrhosis generally clinical feature what you can find is ascites will start from as a complication of portal hypertension from the stage c3 onwards then you uh, there will be a complication will lead to c3 c4 c5 generally patient will you will find in this c c3 to c5 stage c1 c2 generally we find it less so you can see liver is shrunk shrinking in all the whole the cirrhosis liver is will be enlarged in the initial stages when the cirrhosis is not there that time there will be uh, liver enlargement will be there initial inflammation so the causes of these are just the causes of portal hypertension so sometimes they may ask you what is the normal portal venous pressure normal venous pressure is less than 5 mm mg when it is more than 12 then we call it as portal hypertension so sometimes they may ask you left sided portal hypertension what will be the feature there will be only splenomegaly no fundus variceal no fundus variceal will be there there will be no esophageal variceal only splenic vein is affected in this so this is called left sided portal hypertension if you find these are the eight f's of uh, abdomen distension this is very generic question fat feces 
fetus, flatus, fluid, fibroid or functional causes. Uh, then mechanism of ascites, where, how do you do paracentesis done at a spinal umbilical line, what is sac, trans, how do you differentiate, transurate or exudate fluid of the abdomen. So this is our common viva questions. So for more videos, subscribe to my channel. You can follow on Facebook or Instagram. See you guys in the next video. Tata bye bye. I know it's a long video, but uh, I guess it will be helpful. You can check all the links given in the description of this video. And slowly, slowly, I'm trying to make. I'll have to make now. I think uh, for respiratory system and CNS. So let's see how much time does it take. But definitely, I'll make one video on it. Till then, see you guys. Bye bye.